You know, guys, in the 1939 classic, The Wizard of Oz, a lowly farm girl from Kansas found herself swept into a parallel universe. She goes on a quest, finding friends along the way to meet the magnificent wizard in Emerald City in hopes that his power and connections will help her get back home. They were all searching for the wizard to propel them in their lives. There was the scarecrow who longed to have a brain, the tin man who wanted a heart, and the lion that needed courage. Now, it's a classic tale that we all know, and it's always been a reflection of America. The scarecrow, the American farmer, plagued by three things, the environment, the economy, and the government, the tin man, the everyday laborer, the lion, the inner child in all of us, and Dorothy, the good old American values. But it's only once this motley crew has made their way down the yellow brick road to the shining beacon of the Emerald City, they realize that the wizard, the power, and the splendor they thought awaited them was just an illusion. And the gifts they thought they needed to acquire from someone in power were within themselves all along. Now, it seems that in 2021, we Americans find ourselves in seemingly the same predicament. We've traveled down the yellow brick road to realize that the magical wizard is just a 78-year-old man with dementia that has given us promises of a free country that are slowly slipping away. Everything we thought this country was is no more. We are approaching the year anniversary of when people in power decided to lock your life down. And the rules that you and I play by are changing every day. Now, I know what you're thinking. Let's fight for the old America. Let's realign with those classic American values. Well, you're wrong. That's now considered an extremist belief. That's right. You heard me right. The Biden administration just declared a national state of emergency on truth, a national reality crisis. They're making it a priority to help those poor, uneducated, struggling folks at the bottom of the heap understand the difference between true and false, right and wrong, good and bad. Wake up, America, and smell the government rations. The yellow brick road has been painted Soviet red, and there's no turning back. We're not in Kansas anymore. If you are really great and powerful, you'll keep your promises. We must guard against a military industrial complex. The enemy is within the House of Representatives. California Governor Gavin Newsom ordering everyone in the state to stay at home. What would you do with the brain if you had one? These results are not fanciful. They are not imaginary. They are actual and real. The Pentagon has ordered a military-wide stand-down to root out extremism within its ranks. Your mask is of the greatest importance to you. So have it tested regularly. I've learned to put it on quickly, too. If you're just a civilian out driving, you are subject to arrest. It's as simple as that. It is party time, Mom. Welcome to the new America. Uh, our panel today, and the way we're going to do things on this episode, are going to be very interesting. we got some pretty powerful folks on here, some powerful voices, and some pretty passionate folks. Uh, Chief researcher for Blaze TV and Glenn Beck, Jason Buttrell, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. I know you're already steamingly pissed off with some of the things that are happening. Just with the prep in my seat, and it got me going. I was like, oh my gosh. What Just with shows? the prep in your seat. <laughs> Sarah Gonzalez, the host of the News and Why It Matters, and of course, Sarah Gon Gonzalez Unfiltered. Uh, Steve Helms, the Texas legend, and of course, Lisa Page of Lisa Page Made Me Do It. Welcome to the show. It's going to get interesting. It's the new America, but it's not the new and improved America. Uh, we're going to bring up some topics Tonight and tomorrow night, that uh, if it doesn't piss you off, ought to at least scare you. Uh, things that are happening just in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not, but even the comments, and, and I didn't think this was possible, the comments on my social media have drastically changed. Mm -hmm. Like the rhetoric that is being used against me, the accusations that are coming, completely different now. Uh, especially since January 6th. Like how? Well, we'll get into that. It's, it's very, very interesting. 
words being thrown around like uh, seditious and terrorist. And because we've, we've dealt with the racist and the Nazi and the supremacist, we've done all that. But now we're no longer Americans. And, and just to put out something that says, as my brand says, unapologetic patriot, they, they, they're taking that so far down the line. Uh, we're going to pull back the curtain. We're going to show you the wizard, uh, and it's going to be interesting. Before we get to it, uh, Tac Pack is the premier monthly subscription box for military, tactical, and Second Amendment enthusiasts. Just for forty nine ninety five a month, they're going to ship you at least $100 worth of gear from companies like 511, Hex Mag, Mission First Tactical, Armor Spec, and America Grip, just to name a few. They're going to send out some AR-15 parts, everyday carry tools, uh, knives, cleaning kits, a mix of other tactical gear and goodies that you just don't want to miss out on. They're going to be shipped directly to you. So sign up today for the February pack, which is worth $200. That includes American-made AR parts uh, from Texas that are totally going to redefine your kit. Go to TACPAC.com. When you uh, get there, use promo code CHAD. I spell it Chad at checkout. Receive a free extra bag of tactical goodies shipped out with your first pack. So if you're into tactical <laughs> gear, uh, like we all are, from some of the best companies for half the price, TAC Pack is for you. That's T-A-C Pack.com. Get the February pack today, TAC Pack.com. Use offer code Chad. Stay right there. All right, so there's a lot to get into, so I want to move into it. Uh, we, we really are in a crisis here. Um, a lot of stuff being thrown our way. Oh, gosh. You know, if you watched last week's episode, we talked about various conversations that I've had recently with people who hate Trump and everybody that's ever supported Trump are just evil and un-American. And, uh, I mean, I, I built – you're a Marine, right? You've built your life. I've built my life on my patriotism. I love yeah. this country. I love this country, but I'm getting to a point where I don't really recognize some things anymore. You know, I made the point last week where I said that Donald Trump, it was never about the man Donald Trump. It was about what Donald Trump represented, what exactly he stood right. for, because yeah. the government has gotten so far out in front of the people that it was trying to lead that the people now perceive it as the enemy. And I think it, it is an enemy. And the Biden administration, um, there's a, an interesting article in the New York Times uh, it says how the Biden administration can help solve our reality crisis. First of all, first of all, do you start to see, and you're a researcher, you see this stuff, you have to deal with these headlines and you dig into this stuff. The, almost the psychological warfare that's going on just in the headlines alone of like, we, they got to keep propping this guy up, Joe Biden and his stuff. Have you seen that? Have you, I've just seen a trend. Well, for sure. Um, and they want us, it's psychological warfare along those lines, but also along the lines of the rest of us to where, yeah. you know, we, we we have a reality crisis because of four years of Donald Trump, we rejected this leftward push um, after, you know, Obama. It's, it's our, it's, it's, you know, it's something wrong with us in our heads um, for having the audacity to think that, no, that's not the way. You know, like the way that you, you tell us, you know, you on, you know, in your high castle, you know, flying around your private jets, telling us that how much virtuous, you know, you are than we are, and how we're Nazis or Hitler, um, that we had the gall to stand up against that. Yeah. Um, something is wrong. Something shattered in reality. Yeah. And when they say we're going back, that he can fix, Biden can, and he's gonna fix, you know, our reality crisis because he's, you know, their yes man. He's their puppet. Um, yeah. He's going to go right along with that slow march toward the left. And every single GOP uh, person in the government right now that is not fighting tooth and nail right now are complicit in that. If you are not resisting with everything you have, I mean, I was so pissed off during the confirmations. You should have went all in and say, nope, reject that one. Nope, reject that one. Nope, reject that one. And then start working on impeachment proceedings. I'm sorry. And then organizing uh, uh, marches through the street. And I guarantee you that is why they're not uh, br bringing the military out of D.C. right now. Because they know 77 million Americans would march in there and tell them, look, we have a right to protest the government and petition it. We don't agree with this. And I think that the other thing that they're doing is they continue with this capital riot, quote unquote, and the 
insurrection, quote unquote. Oh, and so gosh. what they're trying to do is they're trying to dissuade people from going to the streets and protesting. Mm. They want to get away from all of that, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and so it's almost like people, now, you see this FBI roundup. So now people are scared to go have rallies. Yeah. Now people are scared to protest. They're scared to go out there in the street. Or what are they going to be labeled as? Exactly. An extremist or terrorist. Yeah. You know, what's amazing was uh, during the Obama administration, remember that whole thing where he would not say Islamic terrorism yeah. or Islamic extremism, would not say it. To say, you know, and we were like, what is the deal? He was like, oh, I don't want to piss off all the other Muslims. But now notice they have no issues whatsoever with attaching an adjective to it and saying right-wing extremism, right-wing terrorists. Well, yeah, because they're doing exactly that. Just like in the reason why they wouldn't do it then, because they want to vilify all of them, they want to vilify everyone on the right. Everybody. Everyone. So if you go out and say, hey, I, I don't agree with these mask mandates, terrorist, extremist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, how do we unite a country in which millions of people have chosen to create their own version of reality? had a big conversation with somebody the other day. Um, and there's, in that article that I mentioned, says, um, hoaxes, lies, and collective delusions aren't new, but the extent to which millions of Americans have embraced them may be. 30% of Republicans have a favorable, favorable view of QAnon, according to a recent <laughs> YouGov poll. So now, if you have any idea that, that maybe the stuff that you're seeing is fake news and there may be something more to the story, you're not allowed to question it anymore because now you must be a QAnon conspiracy theorist. And if you are, then as we see in the case of uh, state representative out of Georgia, Marjorie Greene, they'll, they'll deplatform you. They'll take your office away. Now, this is a woman who got 75 percent of the vote, Floyd County, Georgia. And they're wanting to get rid of her in Congress to the point now where she's apologizing. And we'll get into that more. But this whole thing of, uh, of just saying, well, if, if you believe anything other than what we're telling you on the surface, then you're into hoaxes and you're an enemy. You need to be expelled. And think about that. The whole reason I believe there was a QAnon is because the collective media and the yep. elites within the establishment refused to talk about things that they all knew about. Yeah. They all knew about Harvey Weinstein, didn't talk about it. They colluded. Okay, everyone starts saying, okay, something's going on here. They all knew about Epstein. Well, yeah. and, I mean, not to mention, Jason, these are the same people who told us for two years, over two years, that there was Russian collusion, Russian collusion, Russian collusion. And now they want to talk about QAnon? How about that conspiracy? Right. Oh now they gosh. want to talk about QAnon. Let's talk about the fact that you guys perpetuated a conspiracy theory for years and it was proven to be false and there were no repercussions for that. And now they want to talk about QAnon. Yeah. Right. It's laughable. Well, let me, let, me, let me throw this over there to you guys at the bar. Harvard Research Director Joan Donovan suggested that the Biden administration should set up a, quote, truth commission to help <laughs> combat the domestic threat of disinformation. Conspiracy theories create unsafe conditions for the country, but the definition of conspiracy will be redefined in the era of woke and cancel culture. So we can't even mention the word conspiracy anymore because it's going to be redefined. What are y'all's thoughts? I think it's amazing that, um, you know, for pe the same people who, when President Trump talked about maybe taking a certain person's White House credentials away, yeah. not an outlet, but just a person from the outlet, everyone talked about, oh, he's attacking the First Amendment. He's attacking freedom of the press. He's attacking this. This is, a, you know, very dangerous to our society. Now, all of a sudden, we're talking about a truth commission. And you've got AOC as well, who is in on the, you know, truth commission and media disinformation campaign. I mean, it's very, very dangerous dangerous to the republic what we have left of it yeah. i mean I, I just i can't imagine because you have two uh you have two really i would call the mainstream media another branch of government and you have all of these you know you've got the mainstream media and you've got the government and they're really just working in cahoots the left um the left part of the government they're really just working in cahoots along with one another and the longer that they stay aligned and they're able to cover for each other i think the more dangerous that it gets yeah, you, you just got to accept things on the surface. And you brought up AOC, or as I like to call her, Alexandria Jussie Bubba yes. uh, <laughs> Casio cortez Smollett. Uh, 
who you know probably found a noose down there at the chain link fence on the border while oh you wouldn't believe how horrible that was for her imagine the stories between AOC and Brian Williams oh, oh my gosh, gosh. Not kidding. Maybe, David Hogg yeah, you know? David Hogg. <laughs> yeah I mean all the you know because now it's coming out that she wasn't even in the Capitol building yeah. and she's telling all these stories she's about what happened to her in the Capitol building I mean basically mm. almost using sexual harassment yes. innuendo in regards to the Capitol Police that are in there but no you're not supposed to pay attention to any of that thing Bitch, you lying. Yep. I mean, at the end of the day, bitch, you lying. <laughs> yep. I mean, that, that you you were sat there and you told a lie. It's not just a lie, though. It's a lie intended to manipulate yeah. right. people. It like, creates a new to, reality. I mean, to the fullest extent. And to call, uh, you know, Holly and Cruz, uh, she said that they were using uh, tactics of abusers. Yeah. I mean, she is, she's conflating these things on purpose. She is manipulating her followers on purpose because she knows that they are really dumb. And they're not I mean, going to research that. No, they're not going to. And for, I mean, I don't think that she's smart, but I would say that she's conniving. I think that those she's are conniving. two different things. And I said last week on the show, I hate the fact that I admire certain things about her. Yeah. Because let's face it, she she's a warrior yes, she in that is. regard. She she's willing exactly to stand up to even do. against her own side and be that squeaky wheel. Did you see the email that she sent out to all of her supporters after people started calling her out? Tell us about it. She, so she sent out, it was from her campaign or whatever, she sent out to all of her supporters saying, um, we need your help. We need you to scan social media, scan the, these hashtags, and so make sure to report. Yes, report to all the social media um, outlets who is spreading this disinformation. She kept saying disinformation. Who is spreading this? And we will force the social media companies to take them down. Yeah. That's what I mean. The the word force was used. Force social media companies to take well, these down the word with that your help. Users use. That is, isn't it, Steve? I don't know. So and I remind everybody that May thirtieth, twenty twenty, on her Instagram feed, she was calling for civil unrest. Yes. That unless if you cannot question unrest, so I mean, in terms of inciting violence, as they want to accuse Trump and various others of doing on January sixth at the Capitol. Uh, she was she I say she incited summer riots uh, with Absolutely. BLM and Antifa. Absolutely. Because she said, don't have unrest. Now, this is something that ought to scare you. And we're going to we're going to spend the rest of this segment getting into this real quick. Uh, Chancey, if you will, please play uh, clip number two. The Pentagon has ordered a military wide stand down to root out extremist extremism within its ranks after the January 6th assault on the Capitol. Over the next 60 days, regular active activity will be paused on a staggered basis to tackle issues of potential domestic terrorism, while at the same time avoiding disrupting military operations. Now, during the stand down, the Pentagon spokesman said that there are essentially two goals. He said leadership will communicate directly with their men and women about the department's behavior expectations and extremist ideology. The leadership will also be listening to gain further insight from service members about the scope of the problem. How does something like this work, Jason Buttrell? How do, how do you do that? I don't know how you even get this started in the first place. I kind of want to go back to uh, Department of Homeland Security Oh, and even the FBI before that, that they said the reason for bringing the equivalent of two military divisions to safeguard the inauguration was because they had increased chatter online and places like Telegram. And I'm like, that's it? And they're like, that's it. And then <laughs> someone asked, yeah, but what's the actual threat? Did they say we're going in there and killing those mother, eff uh, you know, mother efforts? And they were like, no, there was no actual threat. None at all. So I'm like, I, I couldn't believe how they justified it then. Well, after that, they're like, well, we're keeping the military there because, you know, of that online chatter, um, even though, and we're investigating some of the uh, military members that we think might have been involved. They've only accused one military member of being involved in the Capitol thing out of one million, about one million troops, one, yeah. only one. So now you're going to use that as justification to do a military stand down. I've been a part of military stand downs. It happens for stupid stuff like, hey, we found out the Humvees don't have the right, you know, alternators in them again. You know, crap, they might explode. Let's do a stand down for a week and fix them all. You know, something like that. Like, think of like if you had a recall in your car and you bring it in for, you know, fixing. That's basically what, it, what, it, what a stand down is. But they have no information to justify this. Yeah. The DA, the Department of Homeland Security, did their little bulletin, you know, thing and said um, uh, that, yes, we are under this warning for right wing terrorism or extremism, but in a little tiny line, there is no credible current threat. Then why are you doing it then? Now they're calling the entire military basically out saying you have racists scattered amongst you, which is insulting 
to be to be frank. It's absolutely insulting for someone that is a veteran and for a current uh, member, um, and especially based off of one dude that showed up at the at the riot. One dude. I cannot believe it. We, you know, we would have loved a military stand down back in 2009 for hood shooting, right? There was actual cause for concern there. We have jihadists in our ranks. Mm -hmm. um, there's proof right there. No speculation. He's caught. They didn't do a military stand down. In fact, they didn't even want to call it terrorism. Remember, they didn't want. They wanted to call it workplace violence. No, no, it wasn't terrorism. It wasn't extremism. It was workplace uh, violence. Get the hell out of here with that. Uh, stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, 2012, the FBI comes out and they said, hey, we have a hundred people that we're investigating strong ties to Islamic extremism. No military stand down. That's the context of what we're seeing right now. We're in a lot of trouble right now. They've gone this far. We are in a lot of trouble. Yeah. So if you're a conservative or a quote right winger, you're more dangerous than than uh, an extreme Islamist. Exactly. What's the criteria? Yeah. A right wing, right winger, right wing extremism. Is that conservative? Is yeah. that I voted for Donald Trump? I went to you know I don't agree with abortion. Uh, you're sending me to uh, to prison on all counts. Uh, well, right well, there. And I, and I go back to when they they arrested what 300, 500 people uh, who stormed the federal building during the Kavanaugh hearing. The protesters that stormed the federal building took over during the Kavanaugh hearing. Whenever he was, uh, you know, whenever they. they Put him in and you don't have anybody labeling anybody that way right it's just when it when a, a group of morons go into the capitol building on january 6th who are carrying trump flags yeah well they're insurrectionists right they're seditious insurrectionists these are the weird scary times that we're, we've gotten into and what you just said is an important thing how do you even define the criteria you don't so again something can be very very innocuous where you say i love my country or you post a picture with an American flag, you know, and what happens is you're a traitor. I'm not a traitor. I'm, I'm being patriotic. No, you're a traitor. We see, we see what's really going on here. What do you see? We know. Tell you what, th this, is how, I, I, this is why they won't make anything public. In fact, just today, uh, the House Oversight Committee is meeting with the Secret Service to talk about the threat of these right-wing extremists. Now, you would think that the, the cameras would go in and, hey, we can finally get you know, to the bottom of this. Why are you so worried? Why are you, why are you doing all this, all these unprecedented things? No, it's closed door session. Mm -hmm. That's right, because the wizard has closed the curtain. Hold that Gosh. thought. Be right back. We got so much stuff, and, and that's uh, why we're doing two episodes on this, honestly. Uh, real quick, Nancy Pelosi, she's the gift that keeps on giving, isn't she? <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, they never wanted equality. They, never want, they just want control. You remember, it was so prophetic when Lindsey Graham, during that hearing, said, all you people want is power, and I pray to God you never get it. Yep. Because you're starting to see exactly how ugly these swamp creatures are. And that swamp is being reconstituted right now in a big, big way. And anybody that ever threatened their power pyramid is going down, in their mind, going down. Play clip number three. Tonight, three weeks after the storming of the Capitol, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi calling for greater protection for members of Congress, insisting they now face an enemy within. We will probably need a supplemental uh, for uh, more security for members when the enemy is within the House of Representatives. When asked who she was talking about, Pelosi saying this. We have members of Congress who want to bring guns on the floor and have threatened a violence on other members of Congress. She didn't mention names, but Pelosi's words likely a veiled reference to newly elected Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia. In a widely shared video from 2019, Greene declaring no Pelosi a traitor, implying she should be executed. It's a crime punishable by death, is what treason is. Nancy Pelosi is guilty of treason. It's not the only video coming back to haunt the Congresswoman. She also posted this one, questioning whether the mass shooting at a country music festival in Las Vegas was a setup by liberals to rally support for gun control. So I am really wondering if there is a there's a bigger motive there. And does it have to do with the Second Amendment? That, of course, is not true. Authorities determined the shooter, Stephen Paddock, acted alone. A motive was never determined. 
Green also shown on this 2019 video chasing David Hogg, a teenage survivor of the Parkland school shooting. Hogg was on Capitol Hill lobbying for tougher gun laws. But yet you're attacking our Second Amendment. Now Congresswoman Green sits on the House Education Committee, installed by their Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy. What could they be thinking, or is thinking too generous a word for what they might be doing? Nancy Pelosi. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Green. You know, my issue with Marjorie Taylor Green is, is she believes all the conspiracies. Yeah. <laughs> Not a couple of them. It's all of them. Right. Like, this might be a conspiracy. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> uh, the... Uh, but but you see how the news manipulates things mm-hmm. just in that statement. Uh, you know, when it says, that is not correct. Mm-hmm. Stephen Paddock acted alone. Right. We, how do we know? Right. We never we, got final word on never that. Never been any and investigation. Pelosi today. possibly could have been talking about her. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous. <laughs> so uh, you have that. Then you have the big tech fact checkers, Facebook, Twitter, They've got the teams out there now that are supposedly spotting misinformation uh, on their platforms, strive to ban accounts that seem unfit to have a place on their website. Everybody we know has been restricted in some way. I've been restricted. My political cowboy page has been extremely restricted. Um, I can't even boost ads on there anymore if I, if I want to, if I want to promote a, a live show somewhere. Uh, so Facebook's kind of come under some fire for taking down posts and pages that call out government officials and their leadership, but they've also uh, they've let some interesting posts stay up. Play clip number four, Chance. Mark Zuckerberg's latest controversy began with a podcast interview for the tech website Recode. Holocaust deniers, he said, would not be blocked from Facebook. I'm Jewish, mm-hmm. um, and there's a set of people who uh, deny that the Holocaust happened. Yes, right? a lot. I find that deeply offensive. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I, I don't believe that our platform should take that down because I think that there are things that different people get wrong. Um, either I, I don't think that they're intentionally getting it wrong. Blowback came quickly. Holocaust denial at its core, whether it's on Facebook or any social media platform, is one of the most pernicious and sinister forms of hate speech that exists today. Facebook pages questioning the Holocaust remain on the social network. In a statement, Zuckerberg said, I absolutely didn't intend to defend the intent of people who deny that. So you have a, an elected representative out of North Georgia who gets 75% of the vote and has made some statements that, I mean, she calls Nancy Pelosi a traitor. Treason is punishable by death. I mean, it doesn't matter ultimately what the mainstream says about what Marjorie Taylor Greene believes in. And when did she say those comments? Right. But, but she's an elect. <laughs> she was duly elected. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, so what do we do now? We go in and say, oh, well, I mean, the people elected her. No, we got to pull her out. We got to get rid of her. We got we to cancel her. Got to get out. Um, she said it long before the people duly elected her. And right. that is a really important uh, point to make sure that people understand, because I think that the media, the way that the media tries to uh, portray it, at least on social media where you just have a snippet, they don't really try to put together the fact that all of these comments happened before she became elected. Right. Because that totally changes everything. If, if I mean, if she said these things before she became elected, whatever, what matters is what she said if we want to look at removing her or whatever... We have to go by what she said after she became elected. And And that's the timeline we're supposed to be working on, not before. Right. And look at that precedent that this sets. Yeah. I mean, you want to, there's a reason why this hasn't been done in the past. Yep. Because it comes back and bites you, you know, you know where, and the next time you lose power. Um, Now, I mean, Republicans, I mean, they're trying to say the majority can say whether the minority can sit on a a committee. That's insane. (laughs) Like you, if, if that's the case and you could just, if you're in the minority, you could vote every single one of your uh, people off committees and nothing would ever get done from the other side. Yeah. You really could. Mm-hmm. So now what's to stop Republicans once they get power from getting to uh, kicking AOC off of every single committee for all the stupid things they she's won't. done or said? They Elon won't. Omar, where she gets laid? They won't. They don't have the guts. And they that's don't. the problem. Be- right. Because they see that the Democrats fight dirty and they're not willing to go down into the mud and fight with them because they think that they have some sort of superiority yeah. or we're, well, well, we're morally superior to you guys okay well when the entire country's burning does it really freaking matter right 
just keep playing that fi- violin there, uh, Nero. <laughs> I mean, and that's, you know, just let it yeah. burn down. Mm-hmm. And let's all look over here, look over here, let's detract. Because we really are finding ourselves on the Titanic right now. We're, we're all going down. Yep. But see, we set a precedent with the Donald Trump presidency because they were willing to crash the plane just to kill the pilot. And so now they're still willing to burn the whole thing to the ground as long as they go down as being the ones who were in charge. Um, and that Zuckerberg example with his, how do you have that many billions of dollars and have that bad of a haircut? First of all? <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do you have that? How do you look like a dirty Q-tip? You can't buy good taste, Chad. <laughs> What's that? You cannot buy good taste. I mean, this guy. I'm not convinced he's a real human. Nerd. <laughs> Well, those lizard people. <laughs> he needs a, some. He's sun creepy. He needs some color well, outside, dude. Pretty interesting cat there, uh, smarmy <laughs> son of a bitch. Anyway, uh, I, I that's a perfect example of them saying, okay, well, we'll we, we just pick and choose what we want to keep up. Right. We have a we have a guy sitting in the Oval Office. If he's actually in the Oval Office, we don't know, or if he's in a basement in Delaware somewhere, painted to look like the Oval Office. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this guy eulogized Robert Byrd. This is the guy who didn't want his kids going to a racial jungle. This is a guy who wanted to keep segregation on the buses. This is a guy who uh, talked about wrapping a chain around a black guy's neck out in the parking lot uh, when he talks about corn pop. This is a guy who wants children to jump up in his lap and rub his leg hairs. This is a guy who sniffs people, who touches people inappropriately, who doesn't understand personal space by his own admission. That's just how I greet people. That's just how I am. And sometimes it's inappropriate. This is a guy who was accused by Tara Reid of uh, inserting a digit inside of her forcefully without her permission, and no one ever wanted to discuss that. So whereas Donald Trump says when you're a billionaire and a celebrity, they let you do it, this lady came out and said, no, he did it. He did it. Uh, but <laughs> Can we- I just say, it really is amazing when you list it all off that way. And I'll add one. It's also a guy that never had a real job and used crony capitalism for near 50 years. 50 years. To enrich, by using his elected position to enrich himself and his family. Yeah. But with all the things you uh, just listed off, he is the enemy number one of the people that say he's awesome right yeah. now. And the enemy number one. Yeah. And, and I don't know if you guys saw that video of the guy, this black guy in a hard hat, and, and he's got this, his phone up there, and he's starting, and you can tell he's on the verge of emotions, and he's about ready to break, and he's like, just lost my job. Hmm. Oh, I was an oil and gas worker. Yeah, yeah. J- just mm-hmm. lost my job. Just yep. a stroke of a pen. Just lost my job. You're going to find out, folks, that the wizard ain't on your side. Y'all hang tight. We'll be right back. So we're at a place right now where, quite honestly, I don't, I, I don't know what to believe anymore. You know, um, kind of living in a simulated world. Uh, and it, it's, it's, it's hard to not start looking at conspiracies and think, well, and, and then you start saying, well, they really are out to get us, you know, because um, the rules don't exist anymore like they, we thought they did. You got truth out there, quote unquote truth. They can be changed to benefit the current state of the world. And if you got that kind of power, you can rewrite history. You can make sure that the narrative stays controlled. Um, and you take 2016 and 2020. Take the elections. Both of those led to a complete distrust of the election system. You had the accusations of Russian collusion and meddling in 2016. Now you have the accusations of voter fraud in 2020. Uh, Nobody. And when you have that, it completely dismantles the very core principle and foundation of living in a free democracy. Um, You got, we do things now where there's no consequences. Let's say you rig an election, no consequences. You can't even question it anymore. Joe Biden didn't get 81 million votes. He just didn't get 81 million votes. I mean, you just can't convince me that he did. How do, how do, how do they say, wait, we're going to put a pause right here. We're going to come back. There's going to be another 100,000 here. Uh, and, and we're going to just, we're going to take a break from counting. We'll be back at four in the morning. You know, that kind of deal. You take, you know, commuting jail sentences, being able to commit a crime without any punishment 
Uh, imagine living in that world where people can just do whatever they want to do. Well, that, that's the world we're living in right now. Um, you look at this thing that happened last week with the GameStop deal, taking down the hedge fund. Uh, you got Wall Street and the hedge fund industry. They've been completely untouchable until all those Reddit users. I'm talking to my 14-year-old son on the phone, and I'm like, <laughs> how'd you do, buddy? And he goes, killed it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> killed it. And I'm like, well, how'd you find out all this stuff? And he's like, Reddit. <laughs> Reddit. <laughs> they start pumping and dumping stocks. And then uh, all of a sudden, your Robinhood app starts shutting down and prohibiting buyers uh, and, and the trading for the average person, especially with certain stocks. Uh, and that's the whole deal because the little guys started learning how to play the game. And as soon as the little guys stepped up and they all got together, uh, started screwing things up. It was kind of overrunning the Emerald City. And, and the wizard was starting to get a little, uh, a little nervous about what was going on. And so that's the whole deal. Uh, so if all of these things, are the, the, the election process, if all of these things can be destroyed, uh, if our trust in institutions can be destroyed, if the things that we hold dear, you know, I've always said that we have certain things that are supposed to unify us. We have an anthem. We have a flag. We have a pledge. Uh, you know, we a constitution. By God, mm -hmm. I mean, we got baseball yeah. and apple pie, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, if those things are suddenly created to be evil or you're told that those are evil and you're evil for loving those things or believing in those things, we don't have a country anymore. There, it's, the curtain is pulled back. The wizard is exposed for the fraud that he is. Uh, he's back there just pulling the marionette strings and you know, making the smoke and mirrors happen. And we're all in all of it. We're all in wonder. You know, you walk through Washington, D.C. We've all been there. You walk through Washington, D.C., and you think of the history of the city. You look at the monuments. You see the White House. You see the Capitol building. You see all these beautiful things that you learned about in textbooks and history uh, when you were a kid in school. And now you start to see you just you sit on a throne of lies you smell like beef and cheese you know it's like you really the swamp is really pretty shitty and it's disheartening it's very disillusioning and i've always said that a cynic is a person is a passionate person who's tired of being disappointed and the average american is disappointed um building off of that i i completely agree and i would contend that i would i think that the left has done this entirely on purpose. I think they want us to distrust this, everything about it. Um, I think that they began something with FDR in the 30s. Mm -hmm. LBJ built upon that in the 60s. And Obama really came to finish it up um, in 2008. I remember you were saying something that reminded me of something of, um, remember Michelle Obama back on the campaign trail? I think it was 2007, mm -hmm. um, maybe early 2008. She was in Puerto Rico and she said, we need to change our traditions. We need to change our history. She mm -hmm. actually said these things. We need to change our conversations. Think, just think about that right there and then look back on the you know, eight years of uh, Barack Obama. They did it. I mean, 1619 Project, they're rewriting our history. Our traditions. Uh, I mean, back before Obama, we, we knew if there was a, a man was a man or a woman was a woman. We knew if we which bathroom to go to. We don't know yeah. that anymore. We didn't hate the police. We didn't hate the police. We didn't hate our founding fathers. Yeah, we weren't racially at each other's throats, or at least being told that we were. I see. It, it's it amazes me that everyone tries to talk when they talk about BLM and all the you know racial tensions that's that's going on right now. Um, they try to make it seem like it's a Trump era thing, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, because Trump, you know, obviously. Uh, BLM started under their watch. It started under their watch. Occupy Wall Street started under their watch. They started dividing us then. Yeah. Right. This is just the result. You know, tr tr like you said, Trump was, uh, it wasn't Trump. It was, it was a movement. It was people pissed off at all of that. We didn't want to be judged by our race and yeah. separated and segregated out on racial differences and all that stuff. Race doesn't matter for anything. You know, it doesn't matter. And that's what we were trying to, we were screaming about that. No, Trump yeah. came and broke the system. I said it last week and I want to say it again. It's so important. And I've been saying this for a long, long time. It's not original to me, but a theologian actually said it years ago. Um, so it's possible for a person who's leading people to get so far out in front of the people they're leading that the people perceive that leader as the enemy mm -hmm. uh, because they just, get, they just get blurry out there on the horizon. You, you can't pick them out anymore. You don't know who you're following. D.C. got so far out in front of the American people 
that the voice that we felt like we had in a Donald Trump, because the man didn't matter. It was what the man was. It was, it, Donald Trump was this GameStop. He was <laughs> the Reddit situation. He was the guy that wasn't the establishment. We said, hey, uh, we don't necessarily like the package. He comes in, but screw it. He's going to stick it to him. Mm -hmm. And we want him to stick it to him because we were so sick of our, quote, leadership, our elected representatives running off and leaving us behind. And now they've not only left us behind, they've gone way out in front and started creating, not only separating us. I mean, this is, uh, this is some Mockingjay shit going on here. This is some, whatever the name of that movie is, Katniss. Hunger Games. Hunger Games, where, where you can't touch the big leader because he just shows up on a screen. And everybody lives in their own divided areas, and, and then you got to go out there, and the only way you're going to survive is every year you got to all show up and kill each other. It's the, it really is, and you factor that in with the idea of the purge. It really is. It's the myth of America, guys, the myth of America. America was a great idea, but when you start screwing with the idea, the light bulb goes off. Hang tight. <laughs> Oh, Lisa, it almost makes you wish that maybe when you were in that car wreck last week, did we just put you in a coma and you could have slept through all the next four years, no. or something like that. So It's so scary. I've tried not to watch the news a lot lately just because I got rid of Twitter. But it, what's so terrifying is that we're not even a month into this guy's presidency. I mean, we've started seeing obviously all of this, this movement happen, but now I feel like it's happening in lightning speed every time you hear something or you do something or you say something, you're crucified. Like I'm getting turned down by like um, different ambassador bridges and different types of places that I can try and monetize with my content They're I know they're looking through my stuff and they're like, eh, no, she looks like she's conservative or she might support the constitution. I'm getting denied all of that stuff. <laughs> I'm not able to do anything because I mean, it's so scary and I don't even have a big following, but I guess if they can dismantle the president, the former president, they can do it to us little people too. It's just scary. Let's be honest. Did you get rid of Twitter or did you get kicked off? No, I, no, <laughs> I never tweet. I never tweet. But I mean, I couldn't, I logged off. I couldn't figure out my password. And I'm like, F it, delete it. I don't even need it. Yeah. So you basically gave up nothing. I just, yeah, exactly, exactly. And my life is so much better for it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I mean, I've been banned still, 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 still banned from doing lives on Instagram. Well, the level wow. of, as I alluded to in the intro of the episode, the level of rhetoric and where they've taken it with their vitriol is really starting to scare me. I mean, really, like comments and trolls, that's one thing. But the language that's being thrown around uh, is really starting to scare me because when you start taking words like terrorist and sedition and you just toss those out there, those are some dangerous words. They really are dangerous words. Jason, we're going to get into this. I, I'm, I'm going to get into this more tomorrow night, and so make sure you're telling everybody. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Yep. And, um, folks, listen, the bottom line is this. The Biden administration and their comrades want to categorize hardworking, everyday Americans as extremists, terrorists, and loons. That's you. They want your Facebook, your Twitter posts to be able to speak entirely on your behalf. They want to, they want to shut that down. And in the coming months and years, it could be hard to get a job qualify for a loan, start a business. I want you to think about these things. All because the culture in America has deemed that you are less than for thinking outside of the norms of society. This is the scary stuff. Now, go ahead and make your choice right now. You can, you can line up and, and go to the gulag and hold on to your beliefs and be persecuted, or you can change right now and embrace the, the, the new world order. Uh, as for me and mine, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to continue to be an unapologetic patriot, and I hope you will too. Thanks, guys, for coming on. Join us tomorrow night. BlazeTV.com. Sign up. Love y'all. God bless you. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.